Uh, we won't uh, make it too long, uh, but but still, I think there's some stuff uh, to say. So we've been talking for four days about how to investigate student notes from the Renaissance, and it has been a, a truly uh, great journey for me to, to learn so much from from people with very different backgrounds and materials. So that's that has been great for me, and I hope you have have had a similar experience. Um, but of course, I want to return in this closing remarks a little bit to the question that is central uh, has been central so how to investigate them and especially if, if you want to let's say give our field some more visibility um, what should be in a student note uh, a handbook for student notes from the renaissance is a very pertinent question uh, i think we should discuss um, and i think this has been a very important step to to such a handbook, uh, but only a, a very intermediate step. So if, uh, I, I don't think we are halfway yet, but we'll see uh, what happens. And I, I would look, I look forward to, to transforming the loose thoughts and, and, and contributions into a more systematic handbook, if that's at all possible. Uh, which ideally, I think, should be aimed at advanced students in history and other related disciplines. So this, I think this is also important to take into account if we're going to write up, uh, write down our, our chapters. Um, also, I was imagining these chapters to be quite succinct, so succinct, so quite focused, uh, about 5,000 words or something, with, with, with a clear methodological point uh, without too much uh, other stuff uh, hanging around, let's say, and, and, and lots of useful references, of course. And and this in combination with, with, with one one perhaps more lengthy introduction and, and, the, and the synthesis at the end, perhaps uh, a paper along the lines uh, that Anne Blair presented last night. Um, but that's of course my imagination and we'll see to what extent this can be become a reality. Um, we've, uh, we've already been in contact with Love University Press, so they're very interested in such, such a publication. So, that's something we want to explore further. And for the structure, of course, nothing is, has been, uh, nothing is definitive, of course. So there, uh, I can give you some suggestions, but I think we, we should just discuss uh, this. Um, the, the things that I, that I was thinking that, that, that there should, should be in, 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 in such a handbook are basic auxiliary disciplines uh, to be mastered, such as codicology, which Anne Smets and Jarek van der Beest have presented, among, among others. Paleography, which hasn't been on the forefront of our discussions, but it's very important. Xander has touched on it with his diplomatic uh, edition and, and his argument for a diplomatic edition. Uh, philology is very important, as Domenico Lo Sapio has, has emphasized rightly. So this seems to me a trivium, a very important skills needed uh, for, for somebody studying student notes. And then, of course, we can look at the perspectives uh, to, to approach our materials and what they can teach us in, in various disciplines, as, as um, Blair has suggested last night. So the history of education and, and pedagogical institutions. Uh, we, we've seen wonderful papers by, among others, Daniel Geert and uh, Maximilian uh, Schu on this topic, also intellectual history. Um, Christoph Gerdes uh, and Lorenz and May have made a case of, of why studying students student notes is important for to this end and also uh, to what extent uh, cognitive history is, uh, can can be uh, reconstructed through the student notes as Ray uh, Schreier has, has also be, uh, shown. Um, classical reception, reception studies uh, is, is one of the, the perspectives that was suggested. And I think the Advantis team is one of the, 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 the examples of, of, of such an approach. And, and what I also found very interesting is, is the history of, 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 of the medium. So the, the orality of, of, of teaching uh, and, and, and also the history of the book as we have also been discussing this morning quite uh, intensely. But I guess these, these uh, basic perspectives must, must uh, be complemented by, by still other perspectives. We've had suggestions by Maximilian Schu about gender perspectives. Uh, I, th I think it was Jesus uh, who suggested uh, post-colonial um, um, view on, on the matter. And of course, we, we should make use of our digital opportunities 
uh, as at Aula and at Fontes, we were trying to, to do our best uh, in, in this direction. Um, social network analysis is also something which, which seems uh, very uh, fruitful to me, as Dieter uh, Kamars has shown. And, and then a topic that has all also been, been, been touched upon is the agency of students versus the professors. So to what, to what extent do we have the student and to what extent do we have the words of the professor? Uh, but of course, numerous other questions uh, remain. Uh, how, how did pedagogical theories trickle down through to the students via the professors or not? There's also a question that was raised, I think, following Asaf's talk, but I might uh, uh, be mistaken there. And I, and I want to conclude uh, by referring indeed to, to the, the, the interesting uh, words of Asaf uh, that we should take the pains to, to study this drudgery and mediocrity that we often find in the student notes. Uh, I think that uh, it can also be very amusing because I, I've been amusing myself greatly with, with all these mistakes and trying to uh, decipher what, what these, these notes mean. Um, and uh, But that's, yeah, of course, we cannot capture everything in a handbook, but um, I, I guess we can do our very best to, to give visibility to do this growing field and and uh, to be as comprehensive as possible offering st uh, student potential students of student notes uh, the, the, the 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 tools they need and the references to the tools that might be useful so that's all I wanted to say, and perhaps I, I invite you all to, to give your thoughts here now or at a later stage uh, through the Google Doc, which is still open uh, for a couple of weeks after this event. So the floor is open to you all to give your thoughts. But I understand it was, has been a long day, a long four days. So we'll see what comes out of it. If not, we will just take a drink and, 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 and chat <laughs> and other stuff, but, but it's, it's totally up to you. Ray, uh, yeah. yeah ju just to maybe try and get the conversation going. Um, just a thought, um, since throughout the conference, it's not as if, um, it, it was clear to me that we are all actually talking on quite different things. When, Although it's the most coherent conference I've ever participated in, uh, we're still uh, talking on very different things. And maybe if you want to get to a handbook, it would be useful to structure chapters as dichotomies, as an analytical dichotomies, say, and then it can be also quite short. And each can say, hey, here's a, a certain distinction one might want to have in mind. And it, it won't lead you to an ABC, but it might give you some like good analytical bearings. Say, even a very basic thing, like when I, I submitted my paper, I was sure everyone is going to talk about uh, marginalia. However, many talked about notebooks. And that's okay, it's a codecological, well, I don't know how even to think about this difference, but it's it's already like we have all of these like marginal versus a notebook or interlinear versus marginal annotation in a printed book and et cetera, et cetera. And, and yeah, and this goes down further to other dichotomies that you can imagine and maybe could be helpful for students to position themselves in the world. So that's the thought. That's already a very interesting thought to, to start with as far as I'm uh, concerned. I've noted it down. Uh, I think, yeah, we've uh, in com communication with, with other with members of the at Aulan team, for instance, we've, we've been also discussing the, the, the the value of, of including a terminological list, a glossary, uh, uh, to, to make sure that we are talking about the same thing. Uh, uh, that that's, seems to be important, I guess, that, that we all share, share the same meta language. Um, uh, I see that M Martin wants to uh, jump in. So please, Martin, uh, go ahead. You're still um, uh, now okay. my microphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now there are differences also uh, linked to the level uh, of the courses uh, because um, I have um, I've, I I feel that the notes uh, I show from uh, the um, Latin grammar from Melanchthon are very very um, poor. <laughs> 
<laughs> just because uh, it's a it's a grammar for beginners, and uh, I suppose uh, the the um, uh, the young uh, Latomus uh, was a very young. Uh, stu uh, student, yes, but uh, it's absolutely not the same thing uh, as the courses uh, explaining um, even even the the, the Virgil uh, or, or, or or Greek. Uh, it's not the same. Sounds not the same thing. It's not the same object. Uh, so um, notes cannot be. Uh, the, the contents of the note cannot be the same. And perhaps for this, uh, we have to uh, separate uh, or to say clearly that th there is perhaps differences uh, linked to the level of the courses uh, and of the notes in the courses, of course. I think that's, a, that's, that's <laughs> I think that's a very good point and actually your your comment has, has got me thinking that it, that it would be perhaps an idea to to develop something of a of a basic data uh, framework that's that anybody who approaches a, a document with student notes should answer so uh, questions related to the level of education but also to the historical context the geographical and temporal frame and so yeah. on so that's that seems that's that's a very good good idea. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that there are differences also linked to the support because uh, uh, annotating a, a print book uh, it's not the same that uh, and Marginalia as Ray said it's not the same uh, as uh, write, writing in a um, uh, in a copy book. Uh, it's it's not uh, in a textbook. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I think the practice, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's a very good point. Uh, I'm noting this down. Uh, so I won't forget it. It's pre recorded, of course. Uh, um, Blair wants to follow up on that. Yes, thank you. I think a key element would be some kind of polyglot glossary of vocabulary of analysis. And I really like uh, Van Outgarden and Gilmont had a, a polyglot lexicon in the back of one of their, uh, you know, I forget which one. Uh, you know, it was in four or five languages. And, you know, we are all using different terms and they're not very well defined. It could even be illustrated maybe as an example of, of what the term means. I think just, yeah, and, and that could help become, create norms and bridges between different fields and, and languages and contexts and so on. And then and the other thing, of course, would be by discipline. We've heard about a variety, I mean, artes and the propedeutic versus uh, higher uh, faculties. Um, so there are some elements of glossaries already out there, but I think there's um, plenty of, of new material that this would would add. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, Mark, please follow up. Uh, well, just to add to the uh, the, the points that we uh, that might expect uh, to be uh, uh, discussed in a in a handbook. It's the question of the, uh, the geographical and the chronological boundaries of the material you want to cover, you know, because that is also related to the, uh, to the question of uh, continuity of uh, traditions, um, change and innovation, local traditions, um, or are we, uh, you know, basically uh, observing uh, similar procedures everywhere? Are there uh, sort of, uh, is Leuven in any way special? Uh, or it's just one example of, of a phenomenon that is uh, Europe-wide and even beyond, so. Yes, I think that's a very important point that we uh, we have, of course, to be take a certain, uh, or, or I don't know whether we should take a boundary. Uh, <laughs> now I'm, I'm doubting this, but I think <laughs> we can be as inclusive <laughs> as possible, I guess, because, yeah. We, we should try to arrive at a framework that, that is, can be applied to, to uh, a great or, or wide array of different materials and sources. So that's, that's a very good, good point. And I think we should find a way to do right to this great diversity uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, Avi wants to jump in? Uh, yeah, just to follow up on uh, Anne and Mark's points, uh, I wonder if a sort of cross-cultural taxonomy would be 
useful in the sense of we something where uh, this is ambitious, but you could say you could define different types of annotative activities, but then instead of just defining them by a single corpus, show examples from many different corpuses. So you could say a definition or even something as uh, basic as uh, a manicule or an obelisk or some kind of sign. And then through that, uh, using that as your um, your focus, give, let's say, an example from Hebrew literature, Latin literature from different centuries, so that a reader uh, can get a sense of how pervasive something is. Because uh, I often find that I'm not sure if I'm looking at something unique or looking at something very run of the mill. And if it's something that's 600 years old and that people have been doing uh, since the Middle Ages, then it uh, is important to understand that when we're analyzing our own uh, corpuses and our own materials. So just thinking a kind of a broad taxonomy as opposed to a corpus uh, specific one might be useful. That's a very good idea. And it got me thinking about uh, designing a kind of originality checklist or something like that so that we can uh, assess how unusual or usual uh, students uh, note notebook is uh, yeah, that's a good very good point um Anne wants to yes get back to it, that. Yeah. it occurs to me there are other handbooks out there uh for and 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 it, you might you know draw up a bibliography actually and and look at the different models and it's sort of how, how what to know before you go into the library is sort of one kind of handbook uh, what to what to ask of your source anyways I think we could probably brainstorm and find a few of them I can fish around in my but you know handbooks to codecology and handbooks to this that and the other but, but I think this would be very unique and uh, refer people to other handbooks obviously but uh, also do its own thing Thanks. that's a very good suggestion yeah of course we, we shouldn't in, invent the warm water as we uh, hot water as we say in Dutch I'm not sure whether that's something in the, in the wheel is what you uh, inventing the wheel, the yeah. wheel. That's, that's, that's right uh, sorry um yeah that's a very good idea we, we certainly should make use of, of what exists already and existing expertise and knowledge yeah um Maximilian yeah, I have a practical suggestion. Is it possible from you as organizers to set up some kind of digital repository where each of us can upload um, literature, for example, but also materials from our own research? And I think that would be quite helpful to actually see the materials and to have a, a quick grip on the um, pertinent literature. That's a good idea. We can set up a, a Zotero uh mm -hmm. group uh for, for all of us i can we can do that yeah um uh, that's a very that's a great idea yeah. yeah that would be great um Anilen? um because i think of the visual aspects of the thing because i think uh, visual is very important in, in what we search so how to do uh to donner à voir uh, so, so, the mean of, you mean, so, I'm sorry, I, I was a bit distracted by, by noting down, you mean the visual uh, aspects of, of the, the notebook? Uh, 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 do we have to connect with a website or something else so that the people could see better it's uh, samples from what we do. Our, and, our uh, online visibility, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think uh, on paper, it, maybe it's not enough. No. Um, yes. Um, we're in communication with with Louvain University Press, and it will be open access in PDF. Uh, so that would be the the the, the way we would distribute this uh, handbook, so that everybody can make use of this. So we have funding for this from, uh, from our project. So it does, yeah. uh, but it, it would be an idea uh, to, to have a, a website uh, indeed that, that could accompany this with, with perhaps um, um, revealing materials or source materials uh, for students to engage with for the first time. Uh, yeah. that would because be... it's easier to uh, have something uh, bigger and to see uh, better when uh, annotation or one another of the colors of things or something like that. 
Yeah, that's that's a that's a bonny idea. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. I don't know whether there are any other thoughts because I, I don't want to to keep you too long uh, uh, either. But uh, I'm, I'm very much enjoying this and learning a lot of how this this handbook should look like. Um, and Am says in the chat that there is already a Zotero account for at Aulam, so that that will be a valuable partner yeah. or, or source as well. So yeah, that's that's that's, that's great. We can see how we can. Uh, collaborate. That's that's a very good uh, suggestion. Um, Jan? Yeah, just shortly, uh, the, an open question, because this uh, whole thing started from language uh, teaching in the Trilingue. That's where we started from. And we opened it, uh, this uh, uh, colloquium to all kinds of uh, note taking, professor notes, uh, courses, annotated, all kinds of uh, teaching modes. And of course, yeah, we have our database, we have our uh, group in Lectio and the Leuven uh, focus, which we wanted to open to yeah, a European uh, worldwide uh, specter. But this of course uh, makes that we have a, a certain, uh, well, grasp on, uh, certain notes but that for for instance medicine uh law uh theology we have certain kinds of but it has appeared and we could uh well foresee that much more is needed there to have a, a handbook which is balanced otherwise we we uh, are in danger of uh, putting forward our own experience and uh, small, at least to me, small expertise. So in that respect, this is an, an open call for a platform. And I see many reactions on, on this and that's uh, very uh, positive. Uh, on Hélène, indeed, we need a sort of website uh, to be visible and to, uh, uh, well, uh, awake other people who might not have been here, but who encountered these kinds of sources. So in, in this respect, uh, it was a very fruitful uh, thing to start with. But uh, as Raf uh, already mentioned, uh, uh, humbly, but also very openly, we are halfway and perhaps not even there. Because yeah, we have specialists here like uh, Luigi and others who have been into this uh, for decades and who are real specialists in their field. but we have other disciplines and other sorts of, of teaching mm -hmm. which have been, uh, well, just started uh, to be explored. So, and I see that Yarek immediately had a, a response or a reaction, and that's what I'm, I'm hoping for. And I'm, I'm sure that everybody here present will now uh, be attentive to this kind of, of uh, well, initiative, uh, which we bring together, with uh, the needed dichotomy, huh? indeed, Ray, uh, because a handbook is in need of uh, a very clear structure. We cannot cover everything, but we should at least try to uh, be, uh, well, in a, uh, built in a, in a logical way where we try to uh, guide people um, in the future, but also to uh, bridge uh, disciplines which have not uh, seen each other's uh, um, similarities here. Uh, a, a part which is perhaps uh, under uh, uh, um, uh, scored here is uh, the uh, the codicology. Um, we, from the very start with Magister Dixit already, we were aiming at a codicological and an uh, art historian, uh, art historical approach to these uh, dictata, uh, which and we see that there is a, a huge interest. We had great uh, papers on these aspects, but perhaps you know of other specialists around who have uh, interesting studies. So in that respect for the bibliography or for at least our knowledge that we know who is uh, around elsewhere in these uh, uh, fields, uh, we would be very welcome and uh, would be very grateful to, to you. So in that respect, I think that, well, we made an effort, a first effort, uh, this attempt 
was to my taste a, a great success but we see of course also our limitations and, and that's because we started from our own project of the Collegium Trilingue and from that way we see the world in a, in a different uh, way from our angle but we we feel that uh, a lot is going on eh? so and now I leave the word to to, to Yarik eh? Um, yeah, I just wanted to share one of the difficulties that I always have and that I think many of you will probably uh, recognize is that and what I hope this handbook might solve in, in a way is that sometimes I feel like when I'm researching these things that I don't really have a touchstone to really compare with. And I've noticed that, for example, when I'm talking about my theology student notes, that um, there will also be people, for example, so the example I wanna give is the confessional bias there is in, in these research for theology student notes, because I often, sometimes I talk to people who study Protestant German universities and then I tell them, okay, I look at biblical exegesis and their answer is always like, wait, did they actually teach that in a at a Catholic university? And I feel like a lot of that um, kind of bias or that like ignorance of of each other's like work is kind of what one of the reasons that I think is that for you know the model for the Catholic university is usually always Paris, but I've already seen that you know you can't transplant everything that's said in Paris for the for every Catholic university. And you, neither you can you can't do that either for you know Wittenberg for for example for German universities and I think and that's what I I always have difficulty with because for example now I want to kind of compare like okay how did a student from Wittenberg um, write down his biblical exegesis in class and to my great frustration I haven't really found a way to do that or access that literature or find anyone who really works on that unless it is like in formats like this and I I was thinking that maybe you know like maybe an idea would be if you want to have a handbook that that we could put people together that are kind of looking at the same approach from different angles and kind of force them to kind of talk to each other and, and, and explain the differences and, and maybe that that way you know we can come to a kind of touchstone to compare stuff with that we we see in our you know very individual corpus i don't know if that makes sense no i think that's that's a great idea so it's a kind of contrastive chapters so i think that's that's, that's a, that can be very revealing so i've noted it down and i think it's, it's a good good idea bye luigi uh, thanks for for being here um yeah, and, and this got me thinking also that we should add at least a few paragraphs on, on the heuristics for student notes. How can you find these things? Because we tend to focus on the things we know, but as, as we have experienced that with the Advantis team, if you dig deeper, you can find lots of lots of interesting stuff. So, so that's also a skill that, that prospective student notes researcher should uh, acquire uh, in some way, and uh, I think we can refer to repositories that already exist, but also to to mm -hmm. general yeah methods of, of using catalogs and and, uh, and what their limitations also are uh, of these catalogs because that's they are great catalogs, but they are also not great. So <laughs> that's that's a, a very good point, uh, Yarek. Thanks for for sharing yeah. Uh, that. Yeah, Raf, that's a very pertinent. Uh observation about the online databases that they are very good but not perfect and I think we should not forget how many materials are still out there. Uh, I remember that someone a few years ago said what are you going to write about the trilingue? I thought everything uh, was written by default but yeah if you if you dig deep enough you you find a wealth of, of sources and and mm -hmm. the same goes for other colleges, other institutions, private uh, notebooks, uh, et cetera. So that's just a, a quick, quick final note on my part. Thanks. Alexander, uh, for, for following up on that, yeah. Um, I don't know whether anybody else has, has ideas. You can also share them through the, the Google Doc. I, I will, uh, of course, advertise it in, in follow-up uh, correspondence. Uh, 
uh, about this workshop. Um, I think we as organizers will will soon get together and and and, and brainstorm about how we're going to proceed further, uh, and then hopefully in the month of June already, and then we can can come back to you with some some concrete steps and ideas uh, that we might discuss uh, as well. Um, but we will have to think about the modalities of this discussion and how how this will work most efficiently. So at the moment, I, I don't have. Uh, a clear idea about that, but I hope this will come soon when when the when the, I'm less tired from from uh, this long two weeks. Uh, um, um, if no, I don't know whether anyone else wants to follow up. Uh, if if not, uh, it, it's already past the, the conference. Patricia. Oh, Patricia. Patricia. Okay, sorry. I I, I always yeah, focus on yeah. the on the on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Zoom I hands, not on the physical hands. No, I wanted to thank everyone. And um, as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, handbooks are concerned, one possibility would be to do several handbooks, starting with one on methodological approaches, glossaries, and so forth, and then have single handbooks uh, devoted to particular subjects or faculties. Um, that way, one could also um, make more comparisons um, from one country, one culture to another. Or one could also organize it on the basis of the typology of the printed book, start with incunables. You know, so much has been done, is being done at the British Library in terms of documenting the annotated incunables. The Vatican Library has done that with extensive bibliographies for their annotated incunables and to carry on for the Cinquecento and, and, and so forth. And you are probably in touch already with um, centers of, of research that have done so much at different universities in the past years. At Udine, for example, um, there's an important group of people working on book history um, in so many cities. Um, so if um, uh, we could see what has been going on, if anything analogous has already started elsewhere, um, that could be a model or one could do something differently. But thank you all very much. Thanks, Patricia. Those are great suggestions. Uh, several handbooks, that sounds like so ambitious to me now. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> where I would start. Yeah. But I, I think it's, it's, it's certainly a good idea to reach out to, to other people working on, on, on similar topics. That's, that's certainly a very good idea. And I th I, we will do that. Uh, as well, uh, because we don't want to do double work, of course. That's, that's also, uh, also be, be, be a great <laughs> idea. And on medicine in particular, Oti Marisalo in Finland, Stefania Fortuna in Ancona, you know, there are lots of groups working on, on the annotated medical manuals. So um, that law, everything. So. Great. Yeah, if, if you could share yeah. these these sure. these with us in, in through uh, mail or, or a message or in the Google Doc, that would be great. Uh, of course. Um, that's, that's fascinating to know that there are so many things happening out there. And as Jan said, we should indeed not focus on on the artes, which which was yeah, perhaps a little, the case a little bit because because we uh, of course uh, come from this angle. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as a research uh, team, but, but I think uh, it, it's 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 a very good idea to to reach out and, and keep your your focus open to to other uh, faculties, the higher faculties in particular, but also the Latin schools and the lower uh, mm -hmm. levels of education, uh, which also have yeah, there are also rich materials for this. Um, but the problem with these things, in my experience, is that they, they are often studied very locally, so not at university level, but, but often by my uh, amateur histori historians to use that, that uh, um, not so flattering word, but I think they also conduct valuable wor work, but it's not as accessible as that, that what other academics pu uh, publish. So that's also a thing to take into account. 
uh, I, I guess. Um, perhaps I can can hand the word to Jan now for for some uh, ceremonial uh, yeah. blessings. Stuff. Yes, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> okay, thank you, Raf. Uh, well, first of all, I want to uh, start with uh, uh, reflecting on these two weeks in uh, two words. Uh, a great thank you and great admiration because, uh, well, the quality and uh, the interest of those papers were uh, amazing, uh, just uh, wonderful. Uh, I heard that uh, someone appreciated the uh, coherence, and I must say, I admit that this coherence was indeed uh, reached uh, to some degree and to a high degree. And uh, so that's uh, thanks to uh, you, but also to a team, a team, a wonderful team of young scholars. Uh, you have seen and heard them several times. But I want them. Uh, to, I want to thank them especially for all their efforts. Uh, they have uh, worked night and day the last two weeks, and before that, uh, only 18 hours a day. So uh, they're uh, up to a, a short holiday. Anyway, uh, the uh, the exercise was a success in that way that we we started a, a platform here, and we uh, could convene with specialists, uh, people from all over uh, Europe and uh, uh, farther away. And in this respect, uh, this start uh, was uh, well, very promising and it will give, as we heard from Patricia and others, much more work to, do, <laughs> to be done. And so Ralph will uh, not be entitled to have his holiday <laughs> in the next 60 years. And uh, producing handbooks uh, every two years uh, is a, a good schedule to follow. Uh, so, Raf, uh, apart from my warmest thanks for all your organizational talent and all your uh, well, great energy you put into this project and this uh, conference, I think that everybody may thank you here uh, very warmly uh, for being such a wonderful organizer and uh, scholar. So. Uh, First of all, Raf, uh, great thanks to you. Of course, the, the younger ones, uh, the, the still younger ones than Raf, uh, Xander, Maxim, but also uh, less visible, but he is also a, a great a cornerstone in our project is Andy Petermans. To all three of them, uh, my greatest thanks, and I think uh, that I'm not exaggerating if you have seen what they are capable of. And so we will hear from them in the near future. Uh, they will produce uh, doctoral dissertations, but also student notes. Uh, I'm sure they will produce falsifications and uh, study them uh, and uh, produce new databases, I'm sure. In our team, project team, I've uh, never mentioned and nobody has because they are so that humble and uh, that uh, wise. Uh, they, we have two uh, so-called uh, unofficial uh, supervisors. They are uh, just uh, giving uh, and sharing without demanding anything. And that is our linguist and uh, Greek specialist, Tom van Hall, and our Hebrewist uh, professor of Hebrew, uh, Pierre van Hecke. You have not heard from them, but that will change soon. So also to them, my warmest thanks in the name of the whole team, because they have been uh, aside uh, and uh, always there with their wise uh, remarks and uh, comments. Uh, of course, a sequel is needed, so we will keep in touch. Um, not, not before saying farewell, I want to uh, announce another activity because we are only a small part of a, a great enterprise, which is called Lectio, uh, which has a great director and a managing director. But also you have seen, we collaborate with them uh, because uh, there are many uh, projects running and we have heard uh, Violet, uh, uh, Dieter Kamers and Jarik uh, with their Ad Aulam project and there are many other scholars involved in, in this and I'm sure that this collaboration uh, will continue uh, fruitfully and I thank them very warmly for their uh, 
joint efforts here. Uh, it was uh, good to meet in, in this formal way, but we will see each other, of course, uh, later on, because we need each other, because otherwise we will be too narrow-minded uh, and uh, our angle will be too uh, uh, limited. So in this uh, joint effort and this platform, uh, I want to uh, also thank uh, the university libraries. Uh, apart from Lectio, we have an intense collaboration with the university libraries. Without them, Magister Dixit would never have been possible, and also the other projects would never have had their start. So in that respect, I'm very uh, grateful to them. And uh, we see that uh, the future is in digital humanities. And uh, this uh, collaboration with the, the university libraries has shown so far that without their uh, expertise, uh, this is uh, simply impossible. And in that respect, uh, we have uh, discussed enough. And I want to announce that Lectio has a, a conference because uh, at this very moment, Lectio uh, exists 10 years. Uh, and that uh, will be celebrated with a conference, Imagining the Future, which you see on your screen. Thanks uh, for joining, uh, for uh, sharing this. And uh, it will, will be a, a sort of uh, reflective uh, mood we have, but also with a, an open eye to the future. And uh, I, uh, in the name of Lectio, the director and the managing director and the whole team of Lectio, I uh, warmly invite you to, uh, well, have a look at the program and uh, perhaps uh, join or uh, uh, share uh, some ideas uh, with them. And that said, I have. I think uh, we are ready for the what is in Belgium called now at this hour the weekend, and as uh, is uh, perhaps a, a custom at your university or at your work, uh, uh, some uh, groups have a drink before they uh, jump into the weekend. We never drink in Belgium, you know that. So, uh, but one thing has been uh, well. Uh, not said enough. Uh, those student notes makes you thirsty. And uh, we have uh, witnesses uh, of uh, university students who were uh, totally fed up with logic courses and uh, very dry uh, material that they started to draw uh, pints of beer and uh, more uh, festivity-like uh, uh, actions which they were dreaming of while the professor uh, in front of the aula was uh, discussing Buridan and other things. So I invite you to jump in a very student, uh, student way into your weekend, uh, which for Ann and others uh, in another uh, time zone will uh, be uh, far away, but for us it's uh, very nearby. So with these words, I. Uh, Warmly thank everybody of you, and we will hear and see each other again. And uh, Raf will make sure that you will not forget us. Uh, thanks to you all. And uh, well, this is my point. <laughs> it's just uh, to uh, say close it to you all. Thanks, everybody, and see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.